What beautiful music that absolutely restores and refreshes. Thank you so much. Good evening. How are you this evening? Are you rested and ready for a, another week of work? You know, we've been talking about all kinds of health things, tips, facts. What can make your life more healthy, more happy, more enjoyable? And we've talked about the choices you need to make. We've talked about exercise. We've talked about drinking adequate amounts of good, clean, pure water. We've talked about the environment which needs to be protected. We've talked about belief. Tonight, we're going to talk about rest. Something that many of us, and I'm not going to encourage you to do this until you leave this hall. No snoring, no sleeping, no practicing what I'm talking about until after Elder Wilson has finished what he's got to say. But rest is something that is crucial and vital, and tonight we're going to celebrate rest. In 1996, seven-year-old Jessica was attempting to be the youngest student pilot to fly across the United States. Now think of that, at seven years of age, she was going to attempt to get this record. And accompanying her were her father and her flying instructor. The first couple of days went off uneventfully, but as often happens, the media were closely following this attempt and hounded the instructor uh, for midnight and early morning interviews. And so they were on his case, as it were, saying, this is an amazing thing, tell us more. While talking with his wife on the phone from Wyoming, the instructor told her how frustrated he was with all the media interruptions, how fatigued he had become, how tired he was, how much sleep he had lost, and how much he was looking forward to being finished with the media zoo. Some of you sitting here can identify with exactly that. The next morning, while pre preparing for the flight, the instructor, with an impeccable record for safety, uncharacteristically failed to check the weather and get the briefing before departure. As a result, he flew directly into a storm and the plane crashed shortly after takeoff. No one survived. Interviews with the ground staff later revealed some other very interesting facts. This very experienced pilot had started the engine of the plane without removing the wheel chocks, those little blocks that stop the plane from moving forward. Something every pilot does before they crank the engine. This forgetfulness, his neglect to check the weather, evidenced his severe and extreme state of fatigue. You may identify with this picture here. Sleep science tells us that in the case of this experienced instructor and in many people's cases, tired minds are much more likely to make serious mistakes than those who are rested. In most societies of the world today, much of the population is sleep deprived. In other words, we are losing out on sleep. We build up a tremendous sleep debt, one which we seldom, if ever, recover. As mentioned to you previously, in the US and in many parts of the world, fatigue is one of the most common reasons people go to see a physician. And one of the things we need to do most is to rest and relax. And we need it the most when there seems to be the least amount of time to do it. You know, we said the same thing about exercise. People say, I don't have time to, have it, to do exercise like people say, I don't have time to have breakfast. When you have the least time to do it, that is the time you really need to do it most. And that includes sleep. Because without rest and relaxation, we don't think clearly. We don't uh, do our planning clearly. We're not in a good frame. In fact, I mentioned to you that even some of us become grumpy. Maybe none of you, but I know from experience that that's one of the hallmarks 
when I lose too much sleep. Tired people become inefficient, slower, less safe. They make more mistakes. So in order to remain on top of the game, we need adequate sleep every night. There have been many attempts to increase productivity by extending the work week. Some people have felt that maybe if the week was longer, uh, more daily working hours, things would do better. But they have failed because each, we each have a strong and important physiological need for rest each and every day. As well as a day off each week, we also need a restful annual vacation. Now for Peak cognitive performance, enabled to think well, enabled in order to be able to plan well, to be productive, we must celebrate the refreshing gift of a night's sleep. When our brains are tired, we will go to sleep involuntarily. And I'm watching some of you, maybe you're a little tired tonight. Maybe it's the speaker who's a little boring. Maybe you didn't, maybe you were lulled into a wonderful sleep atmosphere by the music we've had. But when our brains are tired enough, we'll go to sleep involuntarily. These short periods are called micro-sleeps and usually last for just a fraction of a second to no more than a second or two. Now, if you're sitting idly in a chair, that's usually no problem. But if you're driving a motor car, if you're doing surgery, if you're operating a complex piece of machinery, if you're using a chainsaw, this can be a real problem for you because your lapse of concentration can end up causing you catastrophic outcomes. Do you ever feel like this? Many factors in the world we live in today are... We live in a 24-7 world of tempting and demanding activities, wanting to do things all the time, run, run, do, do. And... Uh, these activities contribute to the growing problem of sleep deprivation. Of course, there are the rising number of choices. So many activities, so many things to do. New devices, iPhones, iPad, Samsung, computers, TV, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Tweet, all of those things. And so we don't have time to do the things we want to. You know, with all of the i stuff, the iPhone, the iPad, and so on, we have failed to continue to have eye contact with each other. And the same thing happens in the amount of activities that we engage in to such an extent before we go to sleep at night or try to go and sleep. One of the things which is militating and mitigating against a good night's sleep has been shown to be the use of electronics. Gazing into that screen an hour or two before you go to sleep is likely to decrease your sleep architecture being healthy and give you the good night's rest that you may need. Life has become more complex. Sleep deprivation impairs performance, it impairs attitude, and it decreases your safety. We need sufficient rest. Why? Rest and sleep restores the body. Fascinating research has established that when we are tired, our executive functions of our minds, our ability to execute our tasks, becomes much impaired. And so it's very important to look at the fact that you get adequate sleep each evening. The parts of our brains that make the important decisions, where the choices are made, are the frontal parts, the frontal lobes of your brain. Now, if you really want to understand what your frontal lobes do, look at your own, your children, your skull, your scalp, and see that you have this nice high forehead. Some of us have a much higher forehead than others, but that is artificial. However, the fact that we have this portion of our brain, which is much bigger and highly developed, when you compare it to your dog or your cat, you'll notice that the dog and the cat have a very flat portion of the brain at that point. The frontal lobes are where the reason settles, where our choices are made, our thinking takes place, and where our learned information and life experiences and decisions are made. 
It's this portion of the brain that is most affected by insufficient sleep. So clearly important to remember that when you don't get adequate sleep, those important functions we've talked about, executive functions, are going to fail. The uh, planning is going to be less uh, effe efficient. And um, you're going to become less aware of your surroundings, it, your ability to process new information, and your long-term memory becomes affected. Sometimes even your short-term memory becomes affected. So what you need to realize is that sleep restores so many wonderful aspects of a well-functioning life. Success in all endeavors is determined by the quality of decisions that we make. So why don't we take this tip and make sure that we don't allow all kinds of things to intrude on that very important time of sleep. When we miss out on, on sleep, that sleep debt continues to grow. And sometimes we fool ourselves thinking that having a little extra sleep on a Sunday morning and waking up at midday, well, that means the sleep debt's going to be repaid. Not so. It takes many, many sleeps to repay the sleep debt. As that sleep debt accumulates, so the productivity becomes significantly decreased. And this has been shown in many studies, showing that as sleep decreases and diminishes, so effectiveness decreases. In summary, basically when you look at efficiency of function and amount of sleep, with adequate amount of sleep, which is about seven to eight hours each night, you'll function optimally. As you begin to decrease the amount of sleep, you're going to find that your efficiency decreases by significant percentages, causing you to be less effective. Now, here's another very important thing. The more sleep deprivation you get, the less meaningful your sleep is, the more your body begins to mimic the state almost like that of diabetes. Because the hormone called cortisone is running on an increased amount, your tissues become less sensitive to insulin, and so the body begins to react as if it is in the diabetic state. Now, one of the causes of the great pandemic of obesity that we're seeing in the world today is partly related to this enslavement to the electronics and the lack of adequate sleep, particularly in our adolescence. And so it's um, becoming a matter of absolute urgency to try and avoid sleep deprivation. I hope this doesn't reveal what any of us look like at any time of any day, being weary and dropping into the filing cabinet instead of getting stuff out of it. And this just demonstrates how significant and how problematic sleep deprivation can be. Nearly all experts believe that seven hours of sleep per night is about just enough to get by on, but that most people need eight hours for optimal cognitive performance. And of course, there'll be the people who quote to you the Margaret Thatchers who catnapped Thomas Edison, who reportedly said that sleep was a waste of time, but his workers reported Thomas Edison who felt that sleep was such a waste of time that he went to work to invent the electric light bulb, his workers reported that although he made that statement, they would often find him catnapping through the day. So uh, he didn't necessarily always practice what he preached. So really, if you're looking for the optimal time between seven and eight hours of sleep a night, when you get to way beyond that, you start getting problems of uh, health, cardiovascular disease, when you start getting to the nine, nine and a half hour sleep a night. If you're so fortunate to get to that, you might end up with problems related to health on that score. When you start dropping below the seven, six and a half hours, you're gonna run into problems because you're sleep deprived. A, a really good test of whether you're getting adequate sleep at night, and here's the test for each of you to think about right now. Adequate sleep 
ensures that you have no daytime sleepiness. Dare I ask how many of you today had no day, don't put up your hands, it might be embarrassing, no daytime sleepiness. And that when you wake up in the morning, you feel refreshed. That is the sign that you're getting adequate, good quality sleep. So uh, remember that when you get those tests in place and you're going to um, make sure that you're getting adequate sleep, those are the tests. I'll never forget when I was studying Latin in high school, we had the most horrendous examination coming up and I found myself, I thought, you know what, I'd, I'd done really well in Latin all along, but now I was going to make sure I did even better. And so I stayed up till two, three in the morning. And when I got into the exam that day, it felt like I knew absolutely nothing. And for the young people, for the students, and for the older people who are studying, if you don't sleep adequately, you are not going to be able to get that learning done. You're not going to be able to process the thoughts because during sleep, important things happen. We mentioned the issue of sleep architecture. And, and that facilitates the creation of memory, the ability to learn, and it's when the dreams take place. Now, not only is sleep important for uh, all the good cognitive functions of the body, it's very important for restoring the well-being, the regrowth of tissues, the restoring of muscles, the restoring and the growth of the body in general. So here we find that sleep plays very, very important roles physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Sleep, there are two major types of sleep. There's the uh, non-rapid eye movement. I don't know if you've watched somebody who moves into the rapid eye movement, but if you watch somebody whose rapid eye movement sleep is taking place, their eyes are moving very fast. You can see this often as you watch dogs and cats as well. You see their eyes moving and they, they start running after things which don't exist. That's the rapid eye movement. During the slow eye movement, uh, there are four stages of that, and in that is a very deep kind of sleep. They measure the waves of sleep in that uh, phase, and that's the time when a lot of the uh, reparative uh, and restoration processes of the body take place and immunity to infections is uh, increased. Then there's the rapid eye movement where the eyes are looking from side to side and you see this often in uh, little children. Some individuals in this process of sleep may sleepwalk. Has anybody here sleepwalked? Is everybody here honest? <laughs> Many do sleepwalk, and fortunately not everyone does, because that could really be dangerous, but people can sleepwalk, wet the bed, grind their teeth during the stage of rapid eye movement. It's important for mental and emotional restoration, as well as organizing the memories. During a good night's rest, both types of sleep recycle right through the night four to six times over a 90 minute period for each cycle. So that when you wake up in the morning, you're refreshed, you feel well, ready to go with no daytime sleepiness. And then what you have is what we call good sleep architecture, which has allowed your mind and your body to restore and for you to get on and make the good choices, the one of these is regular time for getting up, a regular time for going to bed, decrease your anxiety, and of course avoid certain ang uh, medications. Avoid the alcohol, avoid tobacco, avoid caffeine. Doing all of that is going to give you a far better sleep. And of course another very important thing, avoid eating just before going to bed. Bypass the refrigerator. Bypass the pantry. Have pure fresh water, not too much, because otherwise you're going to have to get up in the night and get rid of it. But make sure that you avoid that snacking at night because it gives your body the appropriate time to recover and won't keep you 
out of sleep. What are the steps to getting good sleep? We've, we've covered tonight that it's very important to have sleep. Sleep is restorative to your body, to your mind, to your spirit and your emotions. So how do we go about this? One of the things I want to mention to you, and I use this word in the choices. Somebody came up to me the day after the choices and said, you used a specific word. And that word was intentionality. We have to be intentional about what we do. If we do not value sleep, we will not learn to establish the regular bedtime. We won't be doing our regular exercise every day. So this is another choice we need to make. Firstly, the choice that you value it. Secondly, that you're going to do something about it. Then to set the times and then to exercise. We've talked about that and you're going to be sick and tired of hearing that. Establish regular times for rising, regular times for uh, retiring, and stick to them every day, even on the weekends. And this is a crucial component. If you want to really have a good and healthy lifestyle, it needs to be one which is punctuated by regularity. Use a comfortable, firm bed in a quiet, cool bedroom, and for most people, the darker, the better. And it shouldn't have TVs, computers, and even exercise equipment, which in most people's homes are used as towel dryers. You know, the treadmill, the bicycle, and you walk into... I, I was a family practitioner for many years and would go into the bedrooms of many of my patients when they called me out on a house call. And I would see the exercise equipment being used as a clothes horse. They were drying their towels in it, and they, I could see they never exercised on it. So clear the bedroom out, have it clean, don't have TVs in the bedroom, and use it to sleep in. That's what it's for. Eat lightly, avoid watching exciting or depressing TV programs or movies, Avoid engaging in arguments. I know nobody in this room would ever do that, but don't argue just before you go to sleep, whether it's about the sport or the budget or the children's future, or whatever it is. And don't make momentous decisions when you're tired and about to go to bed. If you think that you're not sleeping well and this is a recurring issue, what you need to do is to see your physician and talk about it. I didn't say see your physician and get sleeping pills, but see your physician and see whether or not there's something that needs to be done or to be investigated to help you get a better night's sleep. Put your trust in God. Give him your cares, your problems, your anxieties. Remember, tonight's sleep builds tomorrow's energy. Sleep is as important as diet and exercise, but here's the real blessing of sleep. It's as important as your diet, as important as your exercise, but it's so much easier to do. If I give you the right circumstances, the right bed, the right environment, most of us will sleep well and enjoy it. We just don't often have the time to do it. During the war, World War II, Churchill made the statement, he noticed that people were not productive. They were on this very special um, schedule where they were trying to get more and more done for the war effort. And he then declared that every week there would be one day off and a vacation week or two every year. And it was put into law in the United Kingdom. And um, subsequent to that, Studies have been done showing that that was a very, very important step. It was announced before the House of Commons, if we are to win this war, it will be by staying power. For this reason, we must have one holiday per week and one week holiday per year. What an outstanding approach. And it's one that paid off huge dividends. We all have our limitations. We can't work around the clock. We often feel that we should, we often demand it of ourselves, and in the process, we become far less efficient, far less healthy, and far less happy.
The Bible records that in the very beginning, God instituted a weekly rest to provide a much needed break from the tedium, the weariness of work. And if you cast your mind back to the beginning of the series when we talked about the wonderful understanding we have of our health being not only physical, but integri integri integrally related with our physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional well-being. God knew that, created us this way, so that we could function the best that we can. He instituted that weekly rest, and that instruction is found in Exodus chapter 20, reminding us that there is a Sabbath day rest. The Lord wants us to fellowship with him, and he's even given us a day to do it. He also wants us to rest appropriately during the week, sleep at night, do those good things. That way, daily we sleep, weekly rest, will empower us to be receptive to the blessings that God so willingly and keenly wants to pour out on each of his loved children. So why don't you make another decision tonight? Make the decision to allow sleep to restore your body, your mind, and your spirit, and to fit in with the rhythm of creation in contemplating the need not only for a nightly rest, a weekly rest, and a continual rest in Him because He is good and He is faithful. God bless you as you put your choices into practice each day.